Uh, so we're back. Uh, and obviously since, you know, kind of it's the same videos for the same day, um, you know, I don't do the set project again. Um, no reason to waste that part when you just watched a video that had that, right? Um, obviously our next class session videos, I'll do that again. But uh, what we need to do now is we need to really just finish this off, right? We just kind of have this little part here when we look at it, right? There's kind of, kind of this little shape that comes out here um, and it's all like one piece, right? And it turns into kind of a, a circle shape, right? So what we just want to do is we want to build that and make the uh, uh, wheels properly kind of uh, two wheels, right? Um, and then uh, we want to duplicate those around. We're actually going to be done. So um, it should be pretty fast, pretty easy to do this. Uh, so in this case, you know, I'm, uh, you know, going to go in here and I'm going to select some faces on the back here because you can kind of see that it's kind of this back part that they come out of, right? Uh, remember F for frame selection. You see how that works even for faces. And one of the easiest ways to do this is just going to be to extrude, right? So we extrude. Now this will be a great example of when extrudes on a normal direction kind of lame, right? Because it's making them pull away from each other because in low res, you see how they're not coplanar, right? So this normal direction is going to pull this way, that one's going to pull that way. And that's why they seem to get bigger as they go out, right? Because each face is not uh, lined up exactly with the other one. So they're moving along their own normal direction and that kind of pushes them to stretch, right? So prime example of when extrude on a normal direction, kind of late, right? But I do want the extrusion. So what I do is I extrude, of course, and you can see there's new geometry there. That's what's great about smooth preview is even if you're working low res, sometimes just going to smooth preview to see if you've got extra geometry, right? Because you see how you extrude and you can't tell that the extrusion's there. So it could be easy to say, I'm gonna extrude again and then move it out and go, hey, perfect. But then you go to three and there's this extra loop here that's right on top. Right, and those exist exactly in the same place. And then you see how if you go to add in an edge loop here, it doesn't add it all the way through because it gets to this place and it just doesn't know what it's doing, right? Those edges exist on top of each other. So you guys have noticed that a couple of videos lately, I've, as we've been doing this more, working with Smooth Preview more, and even earlier videos, I've warned you that you have to be careful, right? You don't want edge loops right on top of each other because it'll start to do stuff like that. So anytime you extrude, even if it's in low res, you should move it somewhere, right? So that way those are not on top of each other. Then you see when we do multi-cut, it works the way it's supposed to. So if you ever have that where you go to add an edge loop and it seems to do most of it, but not all of it, that's because you probably have an edge loop hidden in there that's existing in the exact same place as another edge loop is. So whenever you add an edge loop in, whenever you extrude, always make sure they're not right on top of an already existing edge loop. Uh, that'll make things work a lot easier. And that's true whether it's low res or smooth preview. Uh, smooth preview is great though because you can kind of see if there's that issue. Uh, so even if you're working on like a desk, sometimes just hit three to see if you added stuff you didn't realize you added, right? Because it's not easy to detect in low res. So remember that toggle, one for low res, three for smooth preview. In this case, we want a lot of roundness, so smooth preview is gonna be useful for us. Um, so we extrude that out, right? And we can start to move it. And you see how by moving along the regular axes is actually better for this. And that's true a lot of the time, right? So like I said, usually when I extrude, I'll switch to the regular move tool, W, and just move it along the exact axes I want to instead of along normal direction, right? Sometimes normal direction's awesome, thickening the spokes we saw. So it's, it's like I said, for me, it's like a 70-30 proposition, right? 70% of the time you want to extrude and use your regular manipulators and move along a specific axis. 30% of the time you want to actually use the normal direction, which is great when you need it. And 30% of the time is not insignificant, but probably more often than not, just extrude and switch to regular manipulators. Now in this case, I do want a little more geometry. This kind of sticks out a little bit and I want a little more here, but I also want this to kind of straighten up, right? Now, of course I can just switch to this face and move this one out and I could always hold down right mouse button, go to edge mode and move this out that way, right? So it's not like we couldn't do it this way, but sometimes it's easier to just Turn your scale tool on, right? R for scale. And you see I've made sure to turn these back to world, right? World's a good default to have on. And remember, if you scale in a specific direction towards the center, it flattens the shape, right? So in this case, we want to do it along the red. You see how it kind of flattens? And the nice thing is the scale tool stops at zero, right? So that's officially kind of flat, right? If you're looking low res, one, right? It's flat. So that can be a great way to kind of straighten up areas if you need to. Then I'll do a second extrusion, hit W for move, move it out a little bit. And that gives us that extra bit of kind of nice little shape there, right? And if I want, I can move this down a little bit. And, you know, this can always come back a little bit more, right? Um, you know, you kind of want to keep it pretty tight to the form there. 
but I do need some extra geometry here, right? So in this case, what I need now is I still need even more geometry. So I'm going to go, uh, so I did just two extrusions and a little bit of shaping, right? Um, if I want, I can go to edge mode and I can grab this edge and move it up a little bit to round that off in the back a little bit there, right? So remember, shaping is sometimes just grabbing a single edge and moving it up or down. And you see how that just changes shape. I want an extra edge loop down the center here, though. So I'm going to go to multi-cut. I'm going to hold down Control Shift, right? Because Control puts, allows us to put the edge loop in, right? Particularly when we put the cursor over the edge, right? It's going to put the edge. It's going to try to put the edge loop in perpendicular. But Shift also snaps. So you hold down Control and Shift at the same time. So Control Shift, and it snaps to the center. And that's because in multi-cut. Snap percentage is set to 50% there. Uh, remember, Control Shift X is the quick key for this, but this, the um, I still have Snagit on my computer, right? Uh, I switched to um, o OBS, I think, but um, Snagit's still on there for now, uh, and uh, I use Control Shift X as it's recording. So I've been kind of avoiding using that because it does reset the capturing software. But remember, Control Shift X is actually your quick key for that, right? Just like Control E is your quick key for extrude. But control shift, right? Um, once you're in multi cut, control shift will allow you to add an edge loop because control does that. And shift snaps it and allows us to put an edge loop right down the center. Uh, now that's pretty good for us. Uh, I'm going to come back and sharpen these forms up in a little bit. But what I wanted is I really wanted to get myself four edge loop, four faces up here, right? That's why we did two extrusions here. That's why I put an edge loop through here because that gives me four faces on the top here. So I'm going to hold down right mouse button. Right over the object, right? Put the cursor over the object, hold down right mouse button, face. And remember, if you click off, right, it deselects. Tab is your drag select, right? But it is a, you can turn it on and leave it on, right? It's right there. And you just hold down left mouse button and move your cursor, and it just drag selects that. I love that. Now, in this case, I'm going to move that up a little bit because we do see it kind of is a little bit more um, kind of flat on the top there. And remember, F for frame selection, right? That zooms your camera selection in on whatever's selected. And I'm going to extrude that because I want a little more geometry here. So I'm going to extrude, and I'm going to hit R for scale. I'm going to scale it in towards the center a bit here. Maybe hit W to move, move it in a little bit. If you need to, you can always kind of grab these two faces, move them in a little bit as well. All right. And then I'm going to select those four again. Tab for drag, select, grab them. Make sure to deselect those. And I'm going to delete those four faces, right? Because you see how that kind of cylinder shape is pretty large on there. So I'm going to delete those. I might even scale it up a little bit more because it's quite big on that picture. So I'm going to delete those to make it whole, right? Because we want to circularize that, don't we? Right? We've seen this twice now, right? We kind of use it to do a quick little fix on our clock radio for where the buttonhole went in and because we, we needed extra few edge loops. Um, we did it on our um, boat bed posts, right? Um, but I always like to kind of try to show a lot of your tools at least a couple times, right? There's just no way I can show every tool a million times, and some tools you just don't need as much. Um, but uh, I, I try to always show them at least a couple times so you get some exposure to them. So I'm going to hold down right mouse button and go to edge mode, right? Remember, you can double left click on this edge to select the border edge. And in edit mesh, there is something called circularize. And that takes that shape and makes it circled, right? It's a circle form now. And that's what we wanted for this shape, right? Now you see it kind of pulls some of those in a little bit there, and that's okay because you know we're just gonna hit W for move it up a little bit. Um, we can always scale it and adjust things if we need to, um, but in this case, maybe move it back just a little bit. If we want, we could always hit R for scale to scale it out just a little bit more, right? Kind of make some minor little adjustments to shape if we need to. Maybe these faces come back a little bit just to kind of keep that flatter there. All right. Uh, we might even come in and you know select this vertex and that one right there, move those in a little, just kind of straighten those shapes up just a little bit more without losing the circle form there. Remember, that's what circularize does, right? To that edge loop. I might even grab this vertex, move it forward just a little bit. There we go. And then of course, what we could do, um, we move it up a little bit more. Uh, then we could do another extrusion, right? R for scale, scale it in, right? And you see we're basically creating kind of that kind of circled shape up there, right? Let's scale it in a little bit more there. And we could always add in uh, some edge loops to sharpen the forms up a little bit, right? 
But you can see this was just extrusions, um, some multi-cuts, um, and then even just circularize again, right? Because it takes a shape that's not circled, particularly if it's a hole, and makes it circled, right? And that's really useful because the only other way you can do this is to do like a Boolean, um, which we've already seen a bit um, on our room, right? Um, or to kind of um, make a cylinder and then bridge it on, uh, right? You just delete the faces here, delete the faces on the cylinder and bridge them together. Um, but circularize uh, works quite well for those, right? Circularize works quite well for that. So um, what we're gonna do now is I just wanna maybe put a multi-cut in here just to kind of tighten this shape up a little bit, right? So we're gonna just do a little multi-cut there and maybe even one down there just to kind of tighten those shapes up a little bit. Uh, and if need be, right, we can just, um, you know, select these edges. Remember, you could turn symmetry on for this if you wanted to, right? Symmetry, uh, in this case, world Z. And then you could always kind of bring these down a little bit, just to kind of soften that shape a little bit as it goes, right? So remember, as you work, you might need to soften some shapes up a little bit, um, play with them a little bit here. Might just move them down, soften it a little bit. There we go. But it depends on kind of your, um, uh, your part, right? <laughs> um, but there is going to be some kind of cylinder form here on the top because that's what allows it to spin inside the wheel strut, right? Um, so it should be something reasonably similar, if not identical to this, right? So remember, mostly tools you know, extrusions, multi-cuts, a little bit of shaping with symmetry that we can turn off and on, right? Um, you wouldn't want to use symmetry here around the circular area. It'll do weird stuff usually, um, but on these other areas, it's fine. And then of course, edit mesh circularize. Uh, in this case though, I did make a hole because it works quite well with holes. All right, in this case now, I'm gonna tighten these shapes up a little bit. So I'll go to multi-cut. I can hold down control to put an edge up here and you see how it tightens that shape up a little bit. And then I can even put an edge up here and here and you see how it just kind of tightens those shapes up a little bit, makes them look a little squarer, right? Um, so remember that's just putting edge loops close to other edge loops, right? That's just putting edge loops close to other edge loops. So uh, keep that in mind, right? We can go to edge mode and I can double click on this edge loop here. And if I tried to kind of tighten this shape up here with just the regular move tool, it's just not gonna work, right? Um, even if we switch to component or uh, other modes like that, right? It's just not gonna work, right? So once again, this is when that slide tool can be really cool. Mesh tools, slide edge, middle mouse button. You see how it slides along the existing surface? So remember, slide can be cool when you do make some little last minute adjustments like this edge loop here, right? I'm just in edge selection mode, right? Hold down my mouse button edge, double left click and then mesh tool, slide edge tool, right? And you see how it slides along the existing surface that's already there. So um, slide edge can be cool for making little adjustments like this if you need to. But you notice by putting edge loops in, particularly when they get close to the corners, right? Where the smooth preview is rounding the shape off, you see the smooth preview is still rounding the shape off. It's just that the shape itself where the rounding is occurring is smaller. And so kind of the rounding is smaller. And so it, it functions a lot more like a normal bevel. Right, kind of gives you that nice kind of slightly rounded corner, but it's got a bit of sharpness to it as well. So remember, you don't have to just work low residue bevels to get that result, right? And that was just multi-cut. I was just putting some edge loops in, right? And just reminding you guys, you have your slide edge tool if you need it, right? And even circular, I've seen at least twice, right, in previous videos. And that's just taking a, a, a hole that we made, deleting some qu four quads, and just made it a circle shape. Right, let's just edit mesh circularize. All right, so now that gives us that little brace part, right? And what we want to do is we want to kind of make this wheel kind of have that um, kind of two wheel structure there, right? Um, and have a bit of an axle in the center. So uh, because I've left this wheel, right? Notice how I left the wheel on the center of the world. I didn't really move it off the center because it's just easier to build and then move it into position later on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put an edge loop down the center. So we're gonna go to multi-cut, control shift, right? Because that snaps to that 50% right there. And then of course we could turn our symmetry back on, right? Symmetry, world Z, and there we go. Remember in a previous video I showed that if your edge gets off center here a little bit, you might need to open kind of the, this section up right here. This it's You won't even necessarily see it all the time. It's kind of like a, right behind the pause button. There's a kind of like a little bar with a triangle. If you click on that, it opens this up. And if you type in, uh, in this case, since we're working on the Z axis, if you select this edge down the center, and type in zero in the Z, it'll not only flatten that to zero, but it'll move it to the actual zero of the Z axis. 
and that will usually fix your symmetry to make it work, right? You might have to delete half and then uh, do a quick mirror along the z-axis also, but those will kind of help you to fix if symmetry gets off. Um, all right, uh, so uh, symmetry's on, and I'm gonna hold down control because I wanna put kind of an edge loop here to kind of give me the thinner kind of uh, wheel form there, right? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn multi-cut off and I'm gonna hold down right mouse button of the object to go to face selection, right? And remember, we can do face loops, right? So I can click on a face and then I can shift, double click on a face next to it. And that selects a whole face loop, right? So if I select the face and then shift, double click, I can select that whole face. Now, if I hit four on my keyboard for wireframe, I could always just do a little small left click drag, right? Cause you're just your left click drag off the object gives you that little box. That's your pick marquee, right? And that would get you that too, right? But you have to get it from the right view because if you kind of try to do it here, right? It's gonna grab stuff you don't want it to. And sometimes it, you can't see it as well without wireframe, right? So remember four for wireframe, five for shaded, right? And just like one and three, those are the keys that are above your QWERTY, right? Q-W-E-R. Remember, if you select the face and then you shift double click on the face next to it, um, it'll select the face loop in that direction. Right? So if I did it here, so it selects the face loop that direction. But left click, shift left click, there we go. And what I want to do is I want to create a much thinner axial structure in here. So we're going to extrude. Remember, control E is the quick key for that. And we're actually, once again, going to use the, the, uh, the local Z, right? The actual normal direction. Because you notice how that kind of pushes those all in? So even though a lot of time when we extrude, we switch to the regular move tool and just move along a normal axis, there are definitely times when moving along normal direction for your extrusion is really awesome and super useful. So I'll do another little extrusion along the blue arrow to kind of bring that out. And you notice how it basically has created like a little thinner axle inside of here. I, you can't really see it that well in there, but you can kind of see it. I'm going to Q to turn that off. Remember F for frame selection because that'll kind of just set a recenter on your selection. And in this case, I wanted kind of to separate not just these, but this too. So remember, the select menu has grow, just like it has shrink. And that is shift period, right? That's the quick key for it. You notice that kind of the bracket keys are your period and your comma, but it's the uppercase. So you hold down shift period to grow selection, right? So shift period would grow your selection, shift comma to shrink. That expands and contracts your selection, right? But they are in the select menu. And then of course, to break these into separate objects, edit mesh, not duplicate, because this time we want them to be separate and leave a hole, we extract. And then we can hit three, just to put in a smooth preview, hit Q to turn your regular selection tool on, and then hold down right mouse button to make sure you're in object mode. And you'll notice that these are separate objects with holes in them. Cool, right? And since symmetry's still on, we can go to multi-cut and I can put a little extra loop here and here just to kind of tighten those wheels up a little bit, right? So you see how when you put edge loops close to other edge loops, particularly at corners, right, where there's an actual corner, that smooth preview sharpens up. It doesn't get rid of the roundness, but it makes the rounded area smaller, and it makes it look more like a sharpened bevel. All right, so kind of some good little ground rules for how to kind of get some great hard surface stuff with smooth preview. All right, but mostly stuff we've seen before. We've seen extract before. We've seen duplicate faces. We've seen thicken, right? We've seen our symmetry several times, multi-cut. We've even seen circularize a couple times, right? So really nothing new here. Kind of, I did talk about the slide tool a little bit more. We haven't seen that as much, but that's just select an edge or an edge loop, turn slide edge on and hold that middle mouse button and it slides along the existing edges that are kind of perpendicular to it. Kind of neat tool, right? Just to show it more in low res here really quick before we duplicate these around. If I double click on an edge loop and you, we see it low res, right? Mesh tool, slide edge tool. See how it slides along those edges or those edges, right? So it slides kind of perpendicular, right? Kind of, it's, it's, if you're going this direction, it's gonna slide this edge loop along these ones. If you're going this direction, it's gonna slide along those ones, right? So slide definitely is doing something distinct to your regular move tool. All right, just kind of want to remind you of that. Now at this point, uh, I can turn symmetry off and it's gonna actually be easier to work with these as one object. Right? So even though I've made sure to separate them and we could always group them and re-separate them later on, it's just going to be easier to combine them. So I'm just going to select all of them. Right? Remember, hold down right one object mode, just left click drag to select all of them. Combine. Right? That makes them one object. Now, 
you'll notice that they're still not merged or welded, right? So if I hold down the right mouse button for face selection, I could double click on a face and it only selects the connected ones, right? So when you combine, it doesn't bridge, it doesn't merge vertices, it doesn't do a Boolean, right? We have bridge, we have merge vertices, we have Boolean for doing that. Combine just makes multiple objects into one object, even if they don't touch each other, right? Even if they're not touching each other. And remember, double click, double left click on a face selects the connected faces, right? Kind of neat if you have objects connected, combined, but not welded together. You can still kind of manipulate them. All right, so I'm going to undo, right? Control Z for undo because I want these combined. Also, we notice that our low res W doesn't look that great, right? Now, that would be a pretty good resolution for a wheel on a chair in a video game, right? Um, but we're kind of going a little higher res, right? We worked in smooth preview. So remember, make sure you're in object mode, smooth. And now you'll see that that is your low res shape, right? There we go. So now you see how it doesn't look that different between three and one. Generally, you always want your low res to look pretty good. This can be a great way to get a nice looking low res that's still pretty efficient. If you need to, you can always take some edge loops out to kind of make it more efficient, right? Kind of the unnecessary edge loops. So if I went to edge mode and say I had to kind of double click on that edge, I can hit control delete to take it out, right? I can double click on these edges right here. Shift double click to select that one, control delete. You notice how you can kind of take some of these edge loops out that you don't feel are contributing to shape at all? Control delete. Even these ones we could probably take out, control delete. And you see how the shape still stays pretty much the same, even if it's in smooth preview. Now, if I took these ones out, you notice how it radically alters this shape? So those are honestly pretty necessary. Or if you really needed this to be more efficient, you could take out partial loops, right? Leave this part and then have like a triangle here. That would be something you do a video game if you wanted to, right? Um, so you can still work this way and still get a pretty efficient model if you just take a few minutes to just kind of, you know, take a few edge loops out. Control delete, right? Double click on that one, control delete. Basically the edge loops that affect the shape very little are the ones you take out. Like this one right here can affect the shape pretty significantly. So that's kind of a good one to keep, right? I'm not expecting you guys to do that for yours, right? Um, you're just building a good mesh. It doesn't have to be ridiculously super efficient for video games, um, but you still can use this quite effectively in video games if you wanted to. You just need to think about, hey, I need to take an extra like five minutes to take a few edge loops out to kind of get it to only exactly what's necessary to keep a nice rounded shape. But remember, if you're working in smooth preview, you better smooth your model at some point. You always want your low res to look nice, period. It doesn't matter if it's video games or movies. Movies obviously can have a much denser base mesh, Although video games now can have pretty dense base meshes for a lot of stuff anyways. So there we go. So that's our kind of wheel structure. And you could keep making that cylinder if you wanted to, but since it's just kind of line up here, I'm not going to worry about that too much. So I'm going to hit W for move. I'm going to move it up. I'm going to move it over, kind of get it in a position here. F for frame selection. It's a little big, so I can hit R for scale, scale it down a little bit. We just kind of get it into a nice little position here really quick. Something like that should work pretty well for us. Maybe down a little bit. And now we see we have basically our wheel in place. Maybe make it a little smaller. There we go. But now basically our wheel is in place. And what we need to do is we need to get this wheel all the way around. That's kind of why I combined it, just to make one object. It's just going to be easier to do this to, right? And it's more practice with combined. So now what we need to do is we just need to copy this wheel around to the other spokes. So what we do for that, remember, is um, in this case, I need to center my pivot on the center of this cylinder. Now, since I built the cylinder on the zero of the world, we could step to snap to the center of the world. If for whatever reason you didn't model this on the center and it's like over here, you'd use snap to vertex. But in this case, this is built so this vertex, the center of the cylinder, is the center of the world. So I need to snap to grid. But if you needed to use snap to vertex to center it to an actual vertex, you can do that, right? So you can get it exactly to that vertex if it's not on the center of the world. You just use snap to vertex instead. In this case, I'm gonna use snap to grid and select that one because the pivot's out here. Edit pivot, right? Edit pivot. We saw that, uh, I've seen that a couple times now too. And I can just left click drag on the blue arrow just to kind of bring it in. And then left click drag on the red arrow and you see how it snaps right to the zero of the grid right, of the world. 
which just happens to line up perfectly with the cylinder because I made the cylinder and kept it on the zero. If you didn't, like we said, snap the vertex would allow you to kind of snap this to any vertex you want, right? In this case though, because I built it on the center of the world, snap the grid. Remember, you have these magnets up here. So I'll turn snap the grid off and I'll turn edit pivot off. And now the center of this wheel structure is here. Remember when we did this for our buttons for our clock? Remember we did this for the spokes for our lampshade? We're actually gonna see it again uh, later this week for our clock, or not our clock, but our fan, right? Our ceiling fan. So now we just go to edit, duplicate special, because we want to duplicate a whole object, right? You notice it's an object mode, right? Hold that around, it's an object mode. Edit, duplicate special options box. And we could of course turn instance on, right? What instance does is, uh, and in this case, I'll turn it on just to show you. Um, you guys don't have to use, use copy though. Um, in this case, I have five total wheels, don't I, right? So I don't need nine copies. I only need four copies, right? Because I've got the first one. So I only need four copies. One for this one, one for this one, one for this one. Now, we want to use the rotate. You notice how our translates are all set to zero, our scales are all set to one. And we want to do it along the green, right? We want to rotate around the green, which is the Y. So that's this one right here, right? Rotate the center one, X, Y, Z. Now, 360 divided by five is not 36, right? That was 360 divided by 10, right? The previous number. So believe it or not, oh, let me get this in here. 72 is what we want for this one. And I'm gonna come back to that in a minute, why that did that. So I'm gonna duplicate special. I'm gonna just hit five, there we go, because I hit like six or seven or something like that, yeah. Um, and you'll notice that it duplicated those and it moved them all around. Now you'll notice that there is this weird kind of uh, wireframe thing on. I was at two because I'm sitting keys on my keyboard here, 72, right? Um, for whatever reason, it just saw those as the uh, number keys above, not the number pad. I was using 72 on the number pad. We sell 72 degrees, that's 360 divided by five, right? So if you have six spokes, you'd have 60, right? If you have four spokes, uh, it should be um, 90, right? So remember, it's 360 divided by the number of total wheels that you want. 360 by five is 72. Now, because those are instances, you'll notice that if I go to the one of them, it can affect all the other ones. That's how instance is different than copy. Copy, they'd be fully independent. You could change one and it would have no effect on the other ones. Instance is kind of like you made these virtual ghosts, right? They're kind of still connected to each other. There's a, a parent-child relationship going on. So whatever you do to the original happens to the other one. And that's what instancing means, right? Particularly for modeling. Um, you don't have to do instance, right? You can just do copy. That's fine. Um, in this case, I'll kind of go back a step here just to kind of show you guys again. I just want to show you what instance did and was distinct from um, duplicate. So I'll go to duplicate special again, and I'll just turn copy on this time so we don't have to worry about having an instance there. 72, because I have a total of five wheels that I want. Only four copies though, right? One less of the total we want. And there we go. And there are our wheels. And we've seen that a couple times already, right? We're gonna see it one more time. Now at this point, you can see that we've got plenty of objects that are in smooth preview, right? So I'm gonna select all of these Right, remember, left click, shift, left click, shift, left click, and I'm gonna hit smooth. And I'm gonna hit one for low res. And now you have this as your low res, right? That is a straight low res model. That one's still gonna be smooth, there we go, yep. And now that's all low res. Nice looking low res, it's about 20,000 triangles. A little high for a video game chair. Um, not as much as you think though. You could probably get this down a couple thousand, but if you actually look at a lot of chairs and video games nowadays, um, they're probably gonna be, you know, 10,000 polygons, 8,000 polygons, right? They'll save, poly they'll save polygons in the wheel areas um, by having them be a lot less geometry because they're small. But you'll notice a lot of these parts are pretty round and pretty curved. Um, we could save edge loops here, right? We said before, we could always kind of take out the edge loops that are Affect the shape the le least, right? So like some of these guys right here can kind of come out, control delete. And you notice how those affect the shape very little. So if you do need to be a little bit more efficient for video games, you can always come back in here and just take out edge loops, right? Select them, control delete them. 
Uh, I'm not making you guys do that, but I just want to show you that is that Smooth View, even if you're working with a pretty low res game chair, it can still actually be pretty cool. Um, it takes a minute, a minute and a half to come in and take the edge loops out that don't affect the shape very much, right? And that would be the trick too, is take the edge loops out that when you take them out, the shape changes very little, right? Like if I took these edge loops out right here, control delete, right? That affects it dramatically. So those edge loops, you want it to be there. It's ones like these, right? That actually, if you take them out, the shape's affected very little. Right, control delete the out. You can barely even tell that shape's different, right? So those are the ones you can take out to make your model more efficient if you need to, right? Any edge loop that if you take it out, you know it's not gonna affect the shape that much. It's not that that's wrong to have it there, it's just that it's, particularly for video games where you have to be really efficient, it's not necessary, right? All right, so just kind of wanted to reiterate those little things, remind you guys that you should always smooth your mesh at least once if you're working in smooth preview so that your low res and your smooth preview actually look pretty good pretty close to each other, you always want a good looking low resolution mesh. Doesn't matter what you're doing it for. Video games, that is actually what's in the video game. Film, it's what the animator's working with, but they need it to look pretty good, even in low res, so that they can animate it properly, deform it properly. Even though for film, they're gonna render at a lot higher polygon counts often. So generally a strong rule that your low res should look pretty nice, right? Um, and that if you're going to work with smooth preview, you better smooth your model, right? We're just using it as a shortcut so I don't have to put in every edge loop in my hand and do all that rounding in my hand. Not impossible to do, it just takes a little longer. All right, uh, so that's a great place to stop there. Um, and uh, we'll finish up the rest of the projects um, later in the week.